Hello Angular developers, today we are diving into how to set up and run a JSON server alongside your Angular project. This is a super useful for mocking a backend API during development. So let's get started. First of all, we need to install the JSON server globally. So either you can create use another folder or you can stay in the main folder of your Angular project. So it's totally fine. I will just run the command npm install. So it is not compulsory to install it globally. You can install it locally as well in the Angular development dependencies. So for it, for that, I will use the flag dash dash save dash dev space JSON dash server. But if you want to install it globally, you can use the dash G flag. Let's install that. Okay. Now let's create a file called db.json db.json. Okay. The file has been created. Now make sure this file is in the root directory of your project. And here I will create the dummy data posts that will be an array of objects ID one. So in this way, I added multiple entries in the posts array X, Y, Z. Okay. Now I will add another property in the main object with the name comments that may have multiple comments. Let me add few more comments like this. Now I will create another property in the root object with the name profile that will contain an object with the property name and the value can be anything. Okay. Now it's time to start the JSON server. So open the terminal and run the command JSON dash server. If it is not installed globally, then you may have to use the NPX before that. Now use the JSON dash server, use dash dash watch db.json. So we are using watch because whenever you make a change in the db.json, it will immediately restart the server and will give you the up to date information or data. Press enter. Uh, I got an error that port 3000 is already in use. So I have to use a different port. So let me check if it is available in this tool. So I will just run the JSON server. And here we have a flag P that we can use to select a different port. So let's do that. So here I will pass dash P is equal to our space three double zero one press enter. Okay, this is available port. And after running that you would notice that this is the base URL of this endpoint. And these are all of the resources or endpoints that we can use. So every property in the, let me show you. So every property in the main object has become the API endpoint and you can hit those and API endpoints to get the data from the, from those properties in the JSON file. Okay. Now it's time to use it. So you can directly use it in any of your component or you can generate a service as well. So for the sake of simplicity, I will just quickly go to the app.component.ts and I will uh, use it. But to use it, we need the HTTP client service. And if you have created a new Angular project and if, are you, if you are using Angular 18, then you have to go to the app.config and in the providers array, you have to pass a function provide HTTP client and call it and make sure to import this function from this path. Okay. If your version is older than Angular 17, then you may have to import the HTTP client module in the app dot module. But in this case, as we are using the latest version of Angular with the standalone component. So this is the recent method to provide HTTP client. Okay. Once that is done, you are ready to consume it. So go to the app.component.ts and we have to inject the HTTP client service for that. I will define a property HTTP is equal to, I will use a inject function and pass it the HTTP client service. Now we have this service injected. We can now create a property private API URL is equal to HTTP colon slash slash localhost and in our case, the port is 3001 and let me check. There is no slash API. Just keep it as it is. Okay. 
now i will create another function get posts and this will return the response of this dot http dot get function and we are using backticks and here we have passed the property value api dot api url and we have added the path of the endpoint that we want to hit okay so i will also create a constructor here it will immediately call the get post function subscribe to it and get the data and i need to define another property posts is equal to empty array by default and we will assign the data to this new property and we are getting the error that is saying that object type is assignable to a very few other type did you mean to use any okay so you can use any here and this is type any array okay similarly you can use type any array here as well okay in real world project i don't recommend to use any you should create real interfaces and use them here instead of typing any okay so now let's go to the app.component.html and i will remove everything and here let's add an heading posts and below that i will add ul tag and let's add the for loop and post of posts track post.id i guess okay and we have wrapped the list tag between this for loop and we are using post.title okay now you can see that all of the posts are visible now if you go to the db.json and let's try to add another post and let's see if that updates the data currently the server has been restarted i guess because we used the watch it should be restarted it should reflect the latest data but we may have to reload the angular page okay after reloading the angular page you can see that latest data that we just added here is now visible so similarly you can fetch other resources as well like you can like you can create another function get uh, let me see all of the possible resources in the terminal we have comments and profile so comments same thing we are calling the get function on the http client and we are passing the ip url but this time the resource or endpoint is comments instead of posts okay and for now i'm not using any post id okay same for the get profile and i will hit the profile endpoint and it will give me the data whatever is stored in the profile property it is an object so it should be there all, all right so now i will create two more properties comments and profile but profile is not an array so i will add any here okay and in the html we can display other things like comments let's use the for loop so this is the same thing we're using the comments array here and we are tracking by comment by dot id and here we are displaying the comment dot body if that is available yes we can use that and here i need to display the profile data so i will simply add the p and let me fix it heading this was a typo okay in the paragraph i will use profile dot name that will display the profile okay now i don't see anything here so let's see what's the problem here we are using title so there was an error that in the beginning the profile property was undefined here and we tried to access the name property that's why it is failing so we can wrap everything in the div tag or we can wrap everything inside the if condition that if profile is truly then show all of this information okay now there is no error but i don't see any comments yet so let's see what's the problem here okay the reason is that we never called these new functions and we'd never assigned the comments to the properties that we defined earlier so let's do that so here we have called the comments function subscribe to it and passed the data to the comments property and here we passed the data to the profile okay save it 
and now if you go back you will see all of the information is visible here okay now it's time to do an experiment here if you want to get all of the comments of a specific post id for example post id 1 and this comment belongs to the post id 1 and this one too so for that let's try to pass the question mark here post id so i'm passing the query string variable here so let's see if that works okay now it is working it is showing only those uh, comments that belong to that specific post id now if you want to get comments for this post id two, then pass two here and you can see it is working perfect and there you have it you have successfully set up and used json server with your angular project this approach is great for rapid prototyping and development remember to replace it with your real backend when you are ready for production if you enjoyed this video and if you think this video was useful then please don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any upcoming future videos also please like and share this video and if you have any questions or feedback or suggestion then please feel free to leave them in the comments section below i would try my best to reply them as soon as possible thanks for watching and see you in the next one goodbye